Today's couple is struggling with a major cultural clash that she says starts with his family's over-involvement in their day-to-day -day lives. To save his marriage, he'll need to put the mother of his children in front of his own mother. Let's see which woman in his life will win first place. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Teresa Cruzado and Manuel Cruzado, Mr. and Mrs. Cruzado. You've been together for five years, married for four. You have two children together, but you are in a bit of trouble right now. So, Ms. Cru Mrs. Cruzado, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here today? I, I love Manny. Mm -hmm. I truly love Manny. Um, there's not a day that goes by that I don't. However, before I met Manny, I was very determined, goal-driven. I was strictly work, school, career, getting ahead. I didn't let anything faze me. Um, when I met Manny, he was a high school dropout. He didn't, he didn't have much of anything, and I completely lost the focus of myself and the tunnel vision that I had, and I indulged myself into him to help him basically with everything that he has now. Like, I devoted myself to him. Did you stop doing things for yourself? I did. I stopped doing things for myself. S tell me what you stopped doing. Um, I, I just stopped being myself as a person. Like, of did course... Did you stop he's going to school? Yes, did you... I stopped going to school. Uh, I was still very hardworking, but I did stop going to school. Um, I completely changed the way I dressed, talked, even down to the way I cooked. Are you resentful about that? Um, no, because, I mean, I loved him. So, whatever worked, you know, it worked. I don't, I don't hate that I changed it, but I wish I just would have talked with him about it first, more, instead of just completely changing myself mm -hmm. so that way he could actually understood and see me, the real me, from the beginning. Okay. What do you say is the problem in your marriage now? The biggest problem that I have is, of course, Manny's a mama's boy. <laughs> a huge, 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 huge mama's boy. Give me some um, examples. For example, um, mm. we needed money for something. And I wanted him to get out there, hustle, go get it. Like, I'm mm -hmm. your wife. When, when it comes time, I'm gonna go get it. So I need you to do the same thing. So during that moment, he was like, okay, I'm gonna go work. I think he was gonna go cut grass or something, one of his, uh, one of his friends. So when it came back down to it, he had the money. His family member had given it to him. Everything he does, he runs back to his family instead of actually being the hard-working husband and a man that I know is in him. But, but he just, just chooses just hasn't not come to come out. Mr. Cruzado, what do you say is the problem currently with this marriage? It's a lot. Well, it's a lot. list off On a few part. things. <laughs> list off a few things okay. for you, Mr. Cruzado. What's really bothering you? If you could snap your fingers and stop this one thing, what would it be? Nothing. Hmm, nothing, yeah. Because I mean, I'm great. <laughs> 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 well, let me, let me propose a few things based upon your paperwork. Simplify for me. You feel you're stuck between cultures in that in your... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking. Sorry. Uh, in, in your culture, the woman should do all the, the cooking, the cleaning, the taking care of the kids, whether she works or not, and you don't feel like she does... She plays that role as she should. Is that an accurate uh, yes, reflection no, of how no. you feel? It is. It is. It, it was before. Uh... I saw my family, uh, um, you know, I saw That's her That's how cook. your family did things. Yeah, I saw her cook, you know, clean. Uh, so may I step in on that part? Take, no, not take... yet. Let the man talk. Please. I had a hard enough time getting him started. I gave you your time. <laughs> Let me have mine. Let me shine a little bit. Well, I saw her cook, clean, take care of us, you know, I, me and my brother. I, um, when I met her, you know, I, I got with her, obviously because I liked For her. Me. She was attractive. And then... She resembled a lot of my mom back then, mm -hmm. you know. I she mean, resembled your mom in what way? Because Please tell me. If, now, now, Ms. Okay. Cruzado, you and I are gonna have a problem I'm in a minute. Sorry. That's because, you know, she was very loving, and then she put others before herself. You know, she had the potential to cook and clean. Because I'm no not going to lie to you, there's not a lot, there's of, no there's not a lot of females out here that want to do it or, you know, or even know how to do it. Mm. You know, and I'm Hispanic, and I come from, you have to have a breakfast. But this is America. Yeah, yeah. You don't think I know where I live? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's everything he do said. Do you know where you are? In America? No, do you know where you are uh, right now? Yes, ma'am. My house. Respect it. You know, I was accustomed to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. And what I messed up at is I saw, again, my family, my dad worked a lot. 
provided mm -hmm. with money, you know, took care of us with a roof. I got you, and, and I understand your history. My question is, do you expect that same household structure to be, to be carried over into this household? Yes, I did. Okay. And my problem was that it happened too fast, that I wanted it too fast. I didn't take things slow, so when we got You think married, that's how it should ultimately turn out? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, just do you do, do you, are you the primary breadwinner? Right now? Yeah. No, I'm not, we both mm -hmm. work. Okay, so you want her to fulfill all of the old-fashioned uh, requirements of a woman while handling the requirements of the man as well? Well, before, yes, we're talking about the beginning. Like I said, like he said, I was, I didn't have no means to work. I worked with my dad at times, mm -hmm. and um, he's a very hard woman, a man to work with. Whether or not, no matter what the reason is that you're not the primary breadwinner. Once she is, don't you think you should take some of those other obligations off her back and so she that. doesn't have to do everything? Yes, I knew that. I knew that from the start. Now, go ahead and give her a round of applause. I mean, she, she, did a, a, she did an incredible job with me. But where I come from, I understood that, and yet it was, it was going against the I understand. Manhood. You knew what to say. You knew what was politically correct to yes, say. I did. Yes, but I did. You, but how you felt is this is wrong. Yeah, because I thought I was a man, and I, I, I saw my family under the household where, you know, everything he said goes. Yeah, no, yeah, gotcha. And I feel like if, even though I wasn't working at the time, I feel like if I wasn't asking her to do these things and she wasn't doing it, I was not a man. But you're over that now, aren't yes, you? Yes, ma'am, I am. You are, is he over that or is, you, is he not over that? He's not over that. He still acts the same way. He still does the same behavior. And I tried to explain to him when we're married, we're a team. I don't own you, you do not own me. We're, we're, we're supposed to be solid together. And of course, like I completely understand Manny's whole background of his family. But you gotta understand, I'm black and just because, I mean, I was raised, the way I was mm -hmm. raised is not, that does not define me or how I'm gonna walk into my family with right. that. So to me, that's not an excuse. I, I, I got you. Now I wanna turn to some specific things that you say Mr. Cruzada does or does not do that you find incompatible with your relationship. According to them, the Bible says you are not allowed to eat anything that cleans the earth, as in pork, shrimp. I had some shrimp, some fried shrimp, and I had some rice. I set it on the counter. <sighs> they threw it out. You didn't pay for that. And I'm hungry, and I'm pregnant, and you just threw my shrimp away? called his family Bible thumpers. They, and, they you, and you say that their way of doing business, what they're not allowed to eat, what you two can't do, you, you find that disconcerting. Why don't you tell me about that conflict? So his parents, their religion is Seven Day Adventists. Of course, that's Manny's beliefs too. He was raised with that. No problem. So there was a particular time um, we were staying at his parents' house. I was pregnant at the time with my, uh, my first son. And according to them, the Bible says you are not allowed to eat anything that cleans the earth, as in pork, shrimp, nothing of that nature. I had some shrimp, some fried shrimp, and I had some rice. I sat it on the counter. Me and Manny, we went upstairs and we were just gonna have a conversation or something. His parents came down home from church. So of course, you know, when they come down, we go talk to them and, you know, socialize a little bit. So I'm, you know, I'm pregnant. I'm looking, okay, we gonna go talk. I'm ready to go eat this, this shrimp. I get downstairs, I left it on the counter. <gasps> they threw it out? His threw it in the trash. So I'm looking like, okay, well, is it in the fridge? Where's that? So his starts yelling at him. And I'm like, hold up, hold up. You didn't pay for that. And I'm hungry and I'm pregnant and you just threw my shrimp away? Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm with you, Ms. Cruzada. Can I say this? You knew, how, you knew whose house you were going into. You said you respected it, but then you disrespected exactly. it by bringing something in that you would. You, th there's other things you can eat. You don't have to, you know, when, oh, I'm at his presence house, they don't like this, I'm gonna bring this to eat it, yes, not that. That's but, grown woman. But see, he's never done that before because he understood, okay, I, he understood, you know, Tere, they call me Tere, the where you are is the way you are, so we love you, we're gonna accept you for that. She shouldn't have brought it in the first place, you know, I can't back up my wife when she's in the wrong, I can't, I can't do that. And mm -hmm. she always turned it to where I'm always choosing my, my family side at that. Well, do you run to them when, when you have a problem with her? Do you run home and tell, tell, tell uh, your family about what's going on? I only rely on my mom. Uh -huh. I always tell her everything. 
yeah. if really where I'm at work, if I'm not working, or what happens between me and my wife, or, you know, what I'm, um, not what I'm gonna wear, that's excessive. Uh, but, um, he you, know, what I'm, you know, what I'm eating, what I'm not eating, stuff like that, if I'm getting fat or I'm getting skinny because if she's not cooking or she is, you know, stuff you like know, that. You know, it kinda, it kinda seems from your description that she's the main chick in your life and not her. So basically, I'm a mama boy? I'm, I'm saying what you described to me uh, is I go to her with my problems. I go to her to decide whether or not I'm eating too much or not. I go to her to find out if I'm too thin. I go to her, everything you say about all the things you consider, you take to someone other than your wife. That true. would make her primary over your wife. Well, absolutely, I, I, I agree. But that was maybe, it was worse in a, free, in a few years of our marriage. It was worse. But you've gotten better. I got him better at it, yes. Has he gotten better? No. no. So he sneaks and be like, oh, I have, yes, uh, I have. Mm -hmm. yes, I, I have. can catch him in the closet and he's like, oh, uh, who are you talking to? Oh, nobody, just on my phone. Gotcha. I'm just talking to you. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Next, I want to talk to Ms. Cruzado. You say your husband is always trying to get out of work. Yes! So tell me about that. He act like he fell out from the heat and couldn't feel his limbs from his neck down. So he's calling me on the phone like, babe, I just passed out from the heat. And I'm like, so how are you talking on the phone? Would you marry a mama's boy? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. So, Mrs. Cruzado, you say Mr. Cruzado is always trying to get out of working. Explain that to me. Yes. Manny can never really hold a job for two months. He's gotten better now, yes. <laughs> but still, he still does excuses to get out. He was cutting trees with a, uh, just a member of the church, making pretty good money. One day, he just didn't want to work. So Manny act like he fell out from the heat and couldn't feel his limbs from his neck down. So he's calling me on the phone like, babe, I just passed out from the heat. And I'm like, so how are you talking on the phone? <laughs> he said, my dad is holding the phone up to me. And I'm like, OK. So I already knew he was lying, because I know Manny, <laughs> like the back of my hand. So I get there, we go to the hospital. And he's in the hospital. Uh, they, his dad lifted him up and put him in the wheelchair. Strolled him on in the hospital. We get into the, uh, to the hospital, and he's still sitting in the wheelchair, and the lady says, come on, get in the bed. He's like, I can't, like, uh, 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 I can't move. And I'm looking like, you, like, I'm mad, like, you, oh, I'm waiting. And the doctor's like, no, 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 no. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait. So then she walks to him, and so, okay, of course, if you can't feel anything from neck down, you, it's gonna fall like a noodle. She lifts his arms up, and then it registered in his brain, like, oh, let me hurry up and drop it. <laughs> so then she looks at him like, you know what? Come on, get in that bed. He's like, I can't. Magically out of nowhere, Manny's like, uh, 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 I, can I can walk again. I can walk again, basically. <laughs> and she tells him, you know, like, that's the problem. And this is a continuous behavior that Mr. I do. Mr. Cruzado, did you, did, you, did you fake paralysis so you wouldn't have to work? Yes, I did, but I had a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a damn good one, too. But what was your reason, Mr. Cruzado? Uh, I was madly in love. Right. So back then, when I used to, when I had chances of work, uh, and she would have days off, that would be ex first example. I was pregnant. I was like, you know what? My wife's at home. I, I should need to be, be there, there, too. I need to be there. You know what happened if I would just fall? Yeah. And so I fell. <laughs> and I did what I did. Whatever she described I did, I did it. But it was, the, it was, I did it so I could be with her. I got you, I got you. It makes all the sense. It's not the right thing I mean, to do, but I understand why you did it. I understand, Ms. Mr. Cruz, I don't want to ask you about your issues with her. You say you don't really trust her. Why is that? Because there was one time where we were technically separated. That's what she likes to call it. Mm-hmm. Even though we were still married. You were on a break? On a break. I don't believe in that, by the way. I but don't either. It didn't sound didn't feel right. And my instincts are always right, 90% of the time. So I was like, look, Dad, so I don't feel right, I'm going to go. Uh, I remember I hid in the apartment complex we used to live in because I was staying at my parents because uh -huh. it was a break. Right. And so I went over there, <laughs> so I didn't feel right. I'm hiding, but not under the bushes. It's not like a movie. It was, <laughs> right. I was close, <laughs> by, but I wasn't you know, hiding over the bushes like that, like I'm a creep. learning to like you, Mr. Cruzado. <laughs> Keep going. And so I'm over here, right? When I get home, she wasn't home. I was like, oh, man, God, why? Why are you doing this to me? So she comes back 30 minutes later. I'm like, yes, she's home. Yes, she's not doing nothing. Next thing you know, she gets out. 
whip. I could smell her perfume because I wasn't far away, you know? Mm. I, I had to keep a close eye on her. Nice. She was well dressed. She smelled good, by the way. She left. It was 9.30 at that time. She came back, maybe it was around 12, I think it was. And I was like, okay, she's home. But, you know, she was home with a lookalike. You know, she, she brought a twin. He, the dude looked just like me. <laughs> and I confronted her, and I was like, seriously, is this what you're going to do? I was like, is, is this what we come to now? I was upset. You know, I didn't want to do nothing that I didn't want to do. Right. So I stepped away, got in my car, and went home to my yeah. kids. Let's, let, let me ask you, Mrs. Cruzado, did that occur? Yes, it did, but not the way Manny said. Well, how did it go briefly? That particular friend was a friend, was strictly a friend. Manny stalking me was hiding up, on a, uh, hiding up in the apartments, and the friend did, I guess you could say he kind of looks like him. But it was nothing. It, uh, you laughed when I told you he looked like him. Yeah, because it was laughing. funny. But there was nothing ever, nothing like... Nothing going on. Nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing. If Manny, nothing, if, nothing. If, if Manny just like, wants to possess him. and own me. Okay. So he feels like, oh, it's trust issues. No, it's because you want me to completely, completely only talk to you. I got it. Social. I got it. I, mean, I, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got it. 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 What would you do if your spouse acted like they owned you? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Let me tell you what happens when you get married for a while. All of the, the glisten and glow falls off, and then you got to work at keeping the romance together. Yeah. It, 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 and, 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 the, and those initial hormones, they die down, and then you got to put some effort into being that couple again. And I think that's all the two of you really need to do. Uh, uh, if you want to feel manly, work hard and bring home money. Well, I have, I have a goal and a dream. I, I, and, and, and I get that. And that's how, you, that's how you handle that, and that's how you do that. And you uplift him when he does that. I always do. Always do. Always do. Always do. And talk less. Oh. <laughs> Thank every you. man in every man <laughs> in this country wants his woman to talk less. You want to get hey 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 hey. You interrupted me while I'm telling you not to talk. Isn't that deep? <laughs> you are so busy running your mouth. You can't you can't even stop when I'm telling you you're running your mouth. Imagine when she does it to me. And it's killing him. It's killing him. <laughs> and I found deeper still, the less I say, the more my husband hears. If you keep talking, it becomes white noise. And they don't hear it anymore. But if you really want him to hear what's on your mind, say less. And the less you say, the more willing he'll be to hear what you've said. Do you see what I'm saying? It's counterintuitive, but it works. Been married 30 years. Took me 20 years to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're 15 years ahead of the game. Good luck to the both of you. This matter is adjourned. I think it takes time. I think over the course of the years, we've, we've done so much and it's caused so much toxic and turmoil energy. Mm -hmm. I think we have to first like focus on how do we get that, you know, that, that love back into the relationship. All right, well, I'm rooting for you guys. Thank if you, you want to stick around, I might have some seafood for lunch. Thank you, right. it's trip. Yeah, we'll take care of you here, all right? We wanted to try to work it out because we love each other. We really do. Yeah, trying to uh, put her first and um, not trying to be a uh, mama boy no more. And I've been learning to talk less. <laughs> and we've also been working on trusting each other and I guess you could say, um, Kindling the flame. Love conquers all, right? Right. <laughs>